Hey guys, I'm here for video four. It's going to be talking about cell organelles, and this is a very, very important video, so make sure you pay attention to it closely. All right, when we talk about eukaryotic cells, remember eukaryotic means that they have a nucleus, prokaryotic means they don't. So we talk about eukaryotic cell structure. They contain organelles. Now, think of organelles as tiny organs, just like inside of you. You have a heart, the lung, the liver, the stomach. Those are all organs, and they all work together to make you work. Well, in a cell, the organelles are like tiny organs, and they all work together to make the cell work. Now, all of these organelles are contained in what we call cytoplasm. So, cytoplasm is everything inside the cell that is not an organelle. All right. Now we just look real briefly. You're going to be able to take a diagram like this, hopefully when we get done, and be able to identify the mitochondria, which is here. And if I were to draw it, I would draw it like this. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to identify the lysosome, which is the stomach of the cell, the Golgi apparatus, which I would draw like this, um, the smooth ER. Smooth ER would be here like this. Rough ER, which the rough ER is just going to have ribosomes on it, little dots. The ribosome is represented as a dot. Uh, and then, of course, the nucleus of the atom. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to identify these parts. And then if you look at a plant cell, there are a few differences. Now, notice they both, plant and animal, both have a mitochondria. But here's something different. A plant cell has a chloroplast. They both have ribosomes. They both had a Golgi apparatus. They both have plasma membrane. I didn't show it to you. The plant cell has a cell wall. Uh, they both had smooth ER. They both had rough ER. They both had a nucleus. The plant cell has a central vacuole. So, you know, really there are three things that are different between a plant and animal cell, and here they are. And hopefully you'll be able to figure those out and list them on the test if I were to ask you to do so. All right, so let's go over each organelle real briefly. The first one is the nucleus. The nucleus is the control center of the cell. I, you know, I think of it as the brain. It controls all the activities within the cell. Um, DNA, remember, is found in the nucleus. DNA can't leave the nucleus. That's the reason we're going to, later on, we're going to make RNA for the reason of leaving the nucleus. So DNA is in the nucleus. And DNA has what we call a nuclear envelope or envelope uh, and a nucleolus. Now, down here, the nuclear envelope is simply the membrane right here that is surrounding the nucleus. So the nucleus is a membrane-bound structure. All right, and within the membrane it has holes, which are called pores or nuclear pores. All right, pores in the nuclear envelope, and this is what allows material to come into and out of the nucleus. All right, and the last one is the nucleolus. And the nucleolus is often a dark structure inside the nucleus. And the nucleolus is where ribosomes are made. All right, so nucleolus is where ribosomes are made. All right, so that's the nucleus. The nucleus is the brain of the cell. The ribosomes are one I will ask you every day if you come to plus period. Uh, ribosomes make proteins. That's their main function. There's more of them in the cell than anything else, so they're the most numerous organelle. And they can be found on or off the ER. The ER is just short for endoplasm reticulum. If they're found on the ER, it's called rough ER. If they're found off the ER, it's called smooth ER. But ribosomes make protein. Log that down. Great question. Uh, endoplasm reticulum, there's two types, smooth and rough. Now, if I were to draw for, on the test for you, I would draw smooth, would look like this. Rough, would look like this. I mean, there's not going to be a big difference of my personal drawing on the test. So this is smooth, this is rough, ER. Now, smooth ER, think about it. Smooth transports lipids, and I think of it because lipids, remember, are fats and oils. They're smooth, they're slick. So smooth, slick, okay? They transport lipids, and they also make lipids. Now, this is an important differentiation between smooth and rough, so pay attention. Smooth makes and transports lipid. Rough only transports proteins. Now, think about why. What makes protein? 
ribosomes make protein, and where they're found, they're found on the rough ER. So the ribosomes make the protein, and then the rough ER transport. So I kind of think of of um, endoplasmic reticulum. I kind of think of it as a roadway. You know. That's kind of what the endoplasmic reticulum is. Smooth is not only going to be the roadway, it's going to make the lipids. Rough ER is going to be the roadway for the proteins that are made by um, the ribosomes. All right, the next one is the Golgi apparatus. Now, if you'll notice, it looks very similar. I told you I was going to draw, I'd draw smooth ER like this. Well, if I were to draw Golgi apparatus, I would probably just fold it a little bit more. Why do they look so similar, you might ask? Well, the reason they look so similar is because actually this Golgi apparatus is a pinch off of the smooth ER. It's just a little bit of it pinched off. So the Golgi apparatus, you know, is going to look very similar, but it's going to be away from, I didn't tell you this, the smooth ER is going to be attached to the nucleus, and the Golgi apparatus is going to be somewhere else in the cell. So it's going to have the same folded membrane structure look, but it's going to do a little bit different function. What the Golgi apparatus does is stores and packages chemicals. I often joke, I think, well, every time I think of the Golgi apparatus, I had a student one time compare the inside of a cell to a city, and they said that the Golgi apparatus reminded them of the crack house of the city. Uh, that's where packages, or chemicals are stored and packaged. Um, so, I mean, you know, that, it's not so far-fetched. The Golgi apparatus are a place where in, chemicals are stored and packages package. Now think about it. In your body, cells that need more chemicals to be stored in packages are going to have more Golgi apparatus. So you're going to have more Golgi apparatus in your stomach than in your bicep cell or, you know, so because you're going to have more chemicals in that location. All right, the next one is the lysosome. Now if you noticed on the previous slide, the lysosome was actually a pinch of the Golgi apparatus and it's because it has, it's a, it's a vesicle, it's just a round structure, all right? And I'd have to tell you what was inside of it. There's going to have enzymes inside of it, in here. And those enzymes are going to break down food particles, so it's kind of like the stomach of the cell. What actually happens is the lysosome would go up to something and it would engulf it or swallow it. And when it was inside of that, in, inside of the lysosome, the digestive enzymes would break it down so that it could be used by the cell. All right, the next one is the mitochondria. Now, my artistic drawing of a mitochondria, if I ever asked you to draw one, would be like this. It's just a bean-shaped structure. It's got little lines. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. The main purpose of the mitochondria is to make energy. It takes, it takes food or whatever and breaks it down to release this energy. So, yes, both plant and an animal do have this. But we really think of it, you know, in animals, in, in us, you know, as being where our energy is made. Now, plants, on the other hand, have chloroplasts. Now, chloroplasts are unique because they allow for an organism to be an autotroph. It allows for an organism to be able to capture sunlight energy and turn it into a tangible or, or touchable energy source, like glucose, for example. So chloroplast is going to take sunlight and convert it into chemical energy, or convert it into glucose. All right, I hope that helps, and um, video four, make sure you go back and review all the organelles and everything, and know exactly uh, what each one of them mean, what they look like, so not only their function, what they look like, be able to label them on the test. All right, have a good one.